Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Liz Real Talk. Good evening or good morning. Uh, this is November. Welcome to November. Okay, so tonight we're going to talk about why workers in Apple's largest iPhone factory uh, flee uh, en masse, right? Uh, hi, Bob. Okay, good, good. We won't lay. Okay, excellent. I'm happy to hear that. I'm so happy to hear that. Thank you for joining me. Okay, this is this is a fascinating story. I think I've kind of glanced through the news uh, today to see how people have covered it, and most people didn't go in depth. They just, you know, from their perspective, it's just the, the problem is going away because that's what the the, the company is saying. You know, factory is back to normal. Uh, pe they respect people's wish to go home, or they offer people uh, a generous bonus to work in the factory. But the issues underlying the problem is what I think every multinational company should be aware of. Because if this happens to Foxconn, it could happen to you as well. So I think this is a perfect case study. What we're going to do tonight is uh, give you a case study to show how multinational companies struggles with uh, zero COVID in China. And I think it's actually more than zero COVID. It's really the reality of uh, the Chinese society right now. So it has three parts. I'll first give you a chronological overview of what happened. Then we'll talk about what's unusual about what happened. And then we'll analyze the six reasons um, that I think that contributed to this. So, oh, oh, I already shared my screen. Wow. Okay, I didn't know that. All right, so here you see Foxconn. Uh, it is. It has three campuses in Zhengzhou, Henan. And iPhone 14 is made in the one that's called Airport High Tech Park. And it has about 250,000 employees. The outbreak started on October 8th. Uh, at the time, the company strictly followed the zero COVID protocol by managing the campus in a closed loop. Um, and they basically, they send anyone who tested positive or anyone who had close contact with them, they send them away to be quarantined. And then on the 19th, the I think as the cases uh, became more and more, the, the company an an made several announcements. One is they stopped uh, employees from eating in the canteens, in the, in the company cafeteria. And basically everyone has to take food and eat in the dormitories. And then everyone has to wear an N95 mask on campus, except when they're in their dorm. Um, and then the following day, October 20th, Foxconn spokesperson said that production was not affected by the outbreak and the company was to increase output for iPhone 14. And then from the 21st to the 25th, more cases uh, were tested and living condition on campus deteriorated. And some said that as much as tens of thousands of people were sent away uh, to be quarantined and where they sent uh, was those unfinished buildings, uh, aka rear rotting buildings. You know how the real estate developers uh, who didn't have the money to finish the buildings, so they're unfinished buildings. So, so these people who tested positive were sent away to those unfinished buildings. And one of them is uh, Evergrande Properties. And then in some, but, but the number of, um, but those properties, properties were still not enough to hold or to house all the people that were tested positive. So some people were left in the dorms, in the dormitories. Um, and then so people who tested positive and negative lived together. Um, and the situation just got out of control. Uh, they were lacking food, uh, lacking water, and even the, the food they were given uh, was off. And some, in some cases, people said that only the ones that are on shifts, that are working, were given food. So if you're not on shifts, if you're not working, they're not given food. And the sick, the sick ones were left unattended, and things just got out of control. And some hungry employees ransacked a supermarket. And then on October 26, Foxconn issued a statement denying uh, the claim on the internet that 20,000 cases uh, 
that, that they had 20,000 cases and stated that the production was stable. Um, and then on the 27th, uh, Foxconn forbade people to send information out and internet signals were blocked in some dormitories and buildings. And then in the morning of October 29th at 5 a.m., a shocking news came out that eight people living in the room, it's in the room 728, in, in, a, in, a, in a quarantine building, it's an Evergrande building, uh, had all died. This and other death cases have triggered the massive exodus of employees. So I'm going to play a video. Hold on, let me see. Oh, here's the video. So I'm going to show you the video. So this is... Oh, I didn't start from the beginning. So let me start from the beginning. So here's a is here's a comp, comp, compilation of um, uh, social media videos that shows massive people rushing out the plant, um, and then the, the the guards in white uniforms didn't really stop them. I think this is people grabbing food or or, or fighting for food. There's an angry man taking down barricades. Um, Yeah, and then there's uh, also, yeah, this is people, you know, just leaving, jumping over the fence and leaving, um, including the the woman in in the white uniform. They're called da bai, the big whites, the the white guards. So uh, now, yeah, and then this lo- th- these people were waiting to be tested before they can go home. I'm not sure about the timing of this video. This could be in the later stage after the uh, the company allowed people, allowed employees to leave. Uh, this just shows you people. Oh, this is actually taken on the 30th. Uh, people were so upset that they were, they were rioting. They were um, uh, just taking down barricades and it, it happened on the, on the, the, the day after that the eight people were said to, to have died. Um, so people are walking on highways. And um, if, if you ask me why people want to walk, the, the, all transporta- the transportations were not available, right? So there was no public transportation. And even if, if, even if there were, uh, their health codes are probably not green. So if they had all red or orange health codes, they're not able to get on public transportations. So that's why people prefer to walk on their f- on foot. And in this video, I thought is just so striking. This woman uh, riding on a, on a, I think, a 18 wheeler. And the, the, the subtitle says, goodbye, Foxconn. Um, and then the, with a question mark, who, uh, who, whose mother is this? I think it's it, the, the, whoever published this video, which is, you know, showing sympathy to, to this poor woman um, taking taking such a risky ride. So uh, so why are these people uh, on foot? Yeah, I said they, they, um, they, they, pro- they cannot get on public transportation, even they were available. Um, and the other thing is most of these people work in nearby areas. So they don't live very far from uh, where the, the plant was. So that's why, you know, they just decided to to walk on their own. Okay, so let me come back to this. So yeah, so people walked on highways, they walked in the fields. And then uh, some people, local people to who, who, who showed great sympathy to them, you know, set up these stand, you know, water and food or snack stand uh, to to to, to replenish them, you know, because they, they have to walk a long way to go home. So here's just a picture of showing a man who is providing water. The banner says, uh, Foxconn people returning home, uh, their, replenish, repl- their replenish center, something like that. And also people have said that they've seen military uh, personnel uh, and, and trucks and vehicles show up in the city of Zhengzhou as well. All right. And then the latest development is that two days later on the 31st, Foxconn announced that it would provide 
point-to-point uh, -point transportation to send those pe employees who want to go home, home. And at the same time, they quadrupled people's daily bonus from 100 yuan to 400 yuan. That's a day, uh, which is about $55 for the month of November. Um, so, so let's talk about what's unusual. What's, what's unusual about this is, I, in my mind, there are two things. One is why the outbreak was so, what, why was there such a, massive outbreak, right? How, how, how did it happen? Because we have not seen uh, such big outbreak in China for a while. So that kind of, you know, blow people's mind, you know, off. How, wh why did it happen? And the second question is, um, the lockdown isn't the longest. So they, if they started on October the 8th, and it's only what, three weeks, and three weeks is nothing when you compare to the Shanghai lockdown, which was, what, two months. And there are other parts of China that are uh, in, in the lockdown mode for longer than three weeks. And yet the authorities have already backed, you know, backed down um, from their policy. And then obviously they let people, you know, I mean, they, they let people to go home. And, and the, the, the whole zero COVID policy seems to be uh, less draconian as as it's meant to be. So why the gov the authorities have such you know uh, why did it change right? Why does it allow people to go home, which has never happened before, which had never happened before? So that's what we want to talk about. Um, let me see where, where should I? Let's talk about iPhone now. Ninety five percent. I saw the number, it says 98%, but to be conservative, let's say 95% of iPhones are made in China and half is made in Zhengzhou. So these factories are extremely, uh, the three campuses, right? The three campuses um, that, I, that Foxhang has in Zhengzhou are very important to Apple um, because it practically makes half of iPhones, um, all of, all of Apple's iPhones. So, so number one, this factory is very important to Apple. And then the second reason is Foxconn is extremely important to the city of uh, Zhengzhou. Uh, when it was first established in 2012, its contribution, GDP contribution to the capital city of Henan province was 25%. It has uh, fallen to 10%. In 2017, Zhengzhou makes 2.290 million cell phones, which was about uh, one seventh of the world's total cell phone um, production. And it's not just iPhone, it's total, total cell phone, right? And this number uh, fell to 160 million in 2021, but still uh, it, it makes a significant amount of iPhones. So because of this, Foxconn's uh, import, uh, export accounts for 80% of the city of Zhengzhou's total import and export. And, um, and not only that, because of the, uh, the volume, the export volume, it has, Foxconn has made the airport, the Zhengzhou airport, uh, the top six airport in China in terms of volume. And Foxconn employs, directly employs 350,000 350, uh, employees. But uh, if you include all the other related industries, like the service industries and other, it, it's about 100, uh, I'm sorry, 1.75 million people. So it's extremely important to the city of uh, uh, Zhengzhou in terms of its economy. Let me see if I have slides to show you. Um, right. Um, yeah. I think I have my slides not in the right order, but it's okay. So, so both the city of Jinjo and Apple, uh, are not, let me go back to my slides. I think my slides is what I want, are not in the are not interested in, in seeing production halted at this plant. Okay, uh, I'll come back to to the um, to this discussion in a little bit. But let me first talk about 
the, the question that that I asked: Why this massive outbreak is suddenly at this um, Foxconn campus? So I want to show you um, this screenshot that was sent by one of um, Foxconn employees. It showed. I kind of translated the key words, key information here. It showed that there was a total 3,967 tubes of tests. This is COVID tests received, and they were tested because they're on machine. And 1,500 tubes, the results, uh, the results have come out. And of them, 91 tubes uh, tested abnormal or let's say positive. So if you really calculate 91 out of 1,500, right, because only 1,500 tubes uh, have, have, have had the results, it's about 6%. So if you have 6%, um, that's the test abnormal, that if you have 200,000 people on campus, that's easily 12,000 people right, test that could test positive. But the real reason that I think this huge outbreak um, took place is because it has to do with the type of tests uh, China, China does. It's called mixed testing. Um, so the way China does, the, 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 the way China does this type of testing is called uh, mixed. So what it does, is it collects samples from 20 people and then it put the 20 swabs, uh, 20 samples into one tube, and it tests the batch. It tests the 20 uh, samples collectively. So it's batch testing. It does, it's not individual testing. So it tests 20 people together. And if that batch is positive, then you know one of the 20 people or, or any, any number, there's a number of the 20 people uh, got COVID, but you don't know who. Um, so then what you do is you follow up with what they call a rapid test or, or uh, one on, you know, like an individual test. But this type of batch testing works when incidence is low, like we have very few cases. And also it works when people are quarantined at home, because once you, you get a batch that's positive, then you know who those 20, 20 people are. You kind of notify them and then have kind of follow up with them uh, because they're home. But it doesn't work when you have a, a, a out massive outbreak, right? Especially when you have a, a production plant that's still operating. You have all you have 200,000 people working every day, supposedly. And then you have let's say you know, okay, this tube is positive, then those 20 people, we don't know who they are. We have to send them for a second testing. And just think about the, it just, this testing method, I think has failed and then, and has caused a more, um, a faster spread of, of the, um, of COVID. So, so I think it has to do with the type of testing uh, that China uses. The reason China uses this batch testing is it allows the government to quickly uh, finish testing everyone um, because you do 20 at a time, right? You don't, you don't, it reduces the, the number of tests by what, 19 times? Uh, but in this case, it, it failed. It, it causes, um, it causes the, a faster outbreak. So that's one reason in my mind. And then the second reason is they never pro stopped production during the whole outbreak. So this is another screenshots of um, supposedly a message from someone in the management team sharing uh, meeting minutes from a morning session. Uh, so basically it said, uh, in terms of attendance, other than number 27, I don't know what that means. Maybe it's the team or production line. Basically, other than number 27, reaching 60% attendance, all other product production lines are under 55%. So if you have 200,000 people in, in the um, on campus working there, and you have under 55% attendance, that means almost half of people are not working. So for a fox count to deny the 20,000, they, they, they don't have 20,000 cases out of 200,000 200, people, the numbers just don't add up, right? So either 
you, you, the number of cases you have is much higher, or you have a lot of people who just don't want to work, uh, and and they're negative, right? So you have it, it. Just the numbers don't add up, but they do have the problem of a lot of people not working. Otherwise, they wouldn't have um, attendance rate as low as fifty five percent. But then the highlight, the red highlight um, in, in the box, the, the red box on the left in Chinese, and also I highlighted um, in my translated text, it says Apple has pressured our company to improve attendance rate. And also uh, number five, right underneath that, it says, please solve conflicts with employees. Foreign websites already have negative news about our company, something like that. So... Um, so Apple, well, I don't know if this is true, you know, but based on this post, uh, it seems that the management of, of the company is under pressure to keep up with the production schedule. Um, and also they have to, they're also faced with the, the, the challenge of dealing with um, disgruntled workers or, or unhappy employees. Um, okay, so that, that I just explained why there's um, a massive outbreak. So now let's talk about how did this got out of control. Um, I'll come back to Apple and then and then uh, the, the Fox come later at the end. But I'll talk about the the cases or what happened that really triggered this massive exodus. So it was said uh, that this is a post right that basically said uh, a people in room 726 died. Um, this post came out at 5 a.m. on the 29th, October 29th, and they had died for two days and nobody uh, paid any attention. Um, and then, and they said, even the white guards, one of the white guards uh, cried. And then here you have this woman, uh, this is the video, the viral video that actually got everyone talking about um, about what happened at Foxconn. I'll play it for you in a, in a minute. Hold on, let me put on my earphone if I can hear the audio. But basically you have a woman who, who was uh, crying and screaming uh, that room 726 all died. Um, so let me play that video for you. I think it's this one. Yeah, here it is. Let me, let me, is this the one? Yeah, here we go. Let me play that. Okay, so basically she is speaking in a local dialect um, and said, room 726 all died. Oh my goodness, they're all gone. So she kept saying that. Um, so this video basically got people nervous and that's when the massive exodus took place. Uh, there are other posts saying that other people have died on campus because people were just uh, were desperate. So. Uh, but I want. I think this is really the moment where um, people feared for their life and they just had to leave. Okay, so let me come back to this. All right. Yeah, and then uh, Foxconn and Chinese media later denied it, and Foxconn said that that video was edited. It was fake and. Um, they didn't have nine death. I mean, eight deaths in that room, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I just showed you the video. I don't know if that video was edited, but that woman did seem quite um, upset and it, it didn't look like she was faking, right? And here's the picture taken from room 726. And it says uh, pandemic prevention has, um, it has a, a note on it and it's closed from, um, I'm sorry, I, I made a ty typo. It should be October 29th to November 4th. It's my mistake. So it was closed on the day that um, that this news broke. 
till November 4th. And according to the video that this picture was taken, um, in, in the same corridor, the other rooms don't have this note this notice. So it's only this room had this. Um, so obviously that tells us something, this room was unusual. Something happened in this room. We just don't know what exactly happened. And also, if you think about eight adults died from COVID, um, that does not seem to fit with our understanding of, of the um, fatality rate of, of COVID, right? Um, so people wondered, well, did they really die from COVID or did they die from other causes or maybe hunger or, or whatever? So people really want to know what happened. And because they couldn't get information, that caused a panic. And, and I think that, that contributed to the massive exodus. Okay, yeah, and here is the a picture showing um, two signal trucks uh, who were there on site blocking internet signals. And whoever posted this said it's shameful. Yeah. Okay, so now let's talk about um, the, I, I already talked about the, the, uh, the importance of the Fo Foxconn campus to the local economy, right? It contributes 80% to the in total import and out exports of the, of the uh, capital city. Um, it's airport ranked number six in terms of volume. And uh, Foxconn employs directly 350,000 people, but indir indirectly almost 2 million people. Some more pictures. Okay, but speaking of Zhengzhou, I have to tell you, um, this city, the city of Zhengzhou has been in the news a lot lately. Starting from last summer, do you remember the flood? The, the great flood in Zhengzhou? That's in this city. And Zhengzhou also ranks um, number one, Henan, in China in terms of having the most rear rotting buildings, meaning uh, having the most real estate developers not finishing, not delivering their properties, right? So this, I just gave you an article that's uh, dated July 11th from 2020, that title, I, I gave you the title, num ranks number one in China and what's wrong with Zhengzhou, Henan. Remember the village banks? Uh, rem <laughs> That, that we talked about during the summer where people couldn't access their money. And uh, that's also in the city of, uh, in Henan province, right? So, so this province had various um, financial difficulties. And if I could tell you, there was a news from August 13th, Reuters reported from on August 13th, 2022, that a city in Henan stopped uh, running the buses because the the, um, the local transportation authorities didn't have money to pay the drivers. And then, according to a report on November 11th, 2019, uh, Henan province ranks number one in, in China in terms of having the most um, budget deficit. And its budget deficit at the time reached 500 billion renminbi. And that was November 11th, 2019. So this province and this city, the capital city, ha is having major financial issues. And it's showing. Okay, so this, this is a post. This is a, a famous post um, written by an employee who had worked or has worked at Foxconn um, in Zhengzhou for over 10 years. And the head of the, the Zhengzhou Foxconn company, who is the party sec secretary of Foxconn Zhengzhou, uh, reposted it. Basically, it, it, I, I translated the highlights, uh, the, the two highlights of, um, of this post. It basically said the company is doing, has been doing everything it can to deal with the situation, but the local government is not helping them. Um, the, the company basically said running an operation of that, that has over 200,000 people in an area that's in, uh, over 10, 10 square kilometers is like running a small city. 
and um and it says you know it it has it's trying to do everything it can it ha has no outside help it's relying on its own employees as volunteers to do to do everything and then it asked the question did the government provide you 3 days a day right it says well the government during lockdowns did, what they did the most is provide a symbolic bag of groceries and that's it they don't feed you they don't do these things for you but we try to do everything while maintaining production um so it's it basically it's just saying it's extremely difficult and then the second paragraph i think is more interesting it says our company doesn't have the resources to manage public opinions therefore the negative news you see may be part of the truth but please be assured this company is cleaner than the society um i don't know how to translate the word basically it's saying chinese society is dirtier than this company so it's um and then of course then after posting this the the head of the party the party secretary uh came back and saying that she didn't write it it's she, somebody else wrote it it's not her original she just reposted it um but basically the company is sending a very clear message saying that it has tried everything it could um to deal with the situation um while maintaining production right um so if you ask me what what the let me just come back if you ask me what's what are the reasons that have caused this um meltdown shall we say i think there are six reasons number 1 a public a public health policy that's impossible to implement right zero covid because the the company in the beginning stage tried to adhere to uh zero covid by sending people out uh, uh sending people to these quarantine centers but to, uh, towards the later stage if if it's just in, impossible to um to stick to that and then the second reason is it's a testing method that's counterproductive and the third reason is you have a local government that doesn't have the financial means or the money to support the business. Um people say that if if a company that contributes 10% of your local GDP that contributes 80% of your uh import imports and exports uh usually within the municipal government they have an office that kind of serves as an interface with the company because you're so important right you you're so important to the local economy the government will have a dedicated team just to work with you so they ask the question what happened to this team i think the real reason is the government doesn't have money they cannot do anything it doesn't have the resources to help foxconn in this case and then the fourth reason is you have a client that's overly dependent on you that's apple 50% of apple's uh iphones are made at this facility so so apple is putting so much pressure on foxconn to keep up with the attendance keep up with the production we need the phones and then you have the num reason number 5 is missing for missing formation and censorship the more you censor um the more panic it creates and i think um because if you really think of, if think about what happened to these people who died it may not be covid related it could be other trauma so misinformation and censorship caused a uh, lack of trust right amongst the employees and when people fear they heard the people died and they don't know what happened and they're not getting information they just don't trust you what they can do is just leave they quit so that's reason number 5 and the number reason 6 is i think um the employees also had played a part they had they have been brainwashed systematically so um even though foxconn had tried to back down from the zero covid policy i think they were ready to adopt the coexistence they were ready to just coexist coexist with covid and um but the employees refused to accept that if you if you look at the interviews if you if you read the social media posts a lot of people truly believe that covid can kill their life it's deadly that they don't want you know that like they think if they if they get you know tested positive 
that's the end. So um, I think the CCP's year long or years long brainwashing, um, their draconian zero COVID policy, all the brainwashing has misinformed people. People have been brainwashed. So even now you tell them, hey, it's okay, we could coexist with COVID. People don't want it because they've been brainwashed. So all these factors have made it what I call a perfect storm. So Foxconn, Foxconn is a, a Taiwanese company. It's impossible uh, um, to, to, you know, to, to get out of this, this perfect storm because everything um, just all came together. Um, the, six, the six reasons I gave a, a public health a public health policy that's impossible to 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 in implement, a testing method that's counterproductive, a local government that's running out of money, it doesn't have money to help you, and an Apple, the client that's overly dependent on you and giving you a lot of pressure, misinformation causing panic, and then employees who refuse to coexist with COVID. So I think that's a perfect case study for multinational companies in China um, still trying to believe that maybe they can coexist with zero COVID. I think they should open their eyes and, and learn from this, this tragedy. Um, um, yeah, I think it's a tragedy. Foxconn is going to have a shareholders meeting on November the 8th to kind of, I think, reassure people. Um, but it will be interesting to see what, what they say. But I think it's a perfect case study to to give people a warning okay so that's all i would say um do people have any questions am i clear in explaining it's kind of a lot to say in 36 36 minutes let me see if people have questions from richard w thank you thank you um boy cut china Okay, love to hear what you say. Excellent. I'm happy. I'm happy that you're happy. Okay, um, let's see. Okay. Um, I could take a, a, a quick, a, a, a few quick questions. Um, and then I'll do more Q&A on Thursday. Hello from Suzhou. Oh, hi. Okay. Thank, thank you. What what does does China have enough stocks of food at the moment? Um, China had stock up food, right? It has even during the during the early months of the pandemic. I think right now it's a dis distribution issue. I think right now it has a multitude of problems. Not only it's a distribution, it's also it also has to do the the. Uh, Remember yesterday we talked about how Xi Jinping has uh, said the, the CCP officials are uh, lacking action. You know, a lot of people are disheartened. They're just not, they don't believe in the system. They're just not doing their jobs. I think that's the problem. Many people are not doing their jobs because they just, you know, don't believe in it anymore. They don't believe in what they do. And so, um, and, and we yesterday we also talked about, you know, the, the centralized system, you know, Xi Jinping and his political advisor, who Wang Huning, believe in, you know, a centralized system because they believe that it's more efficient in allocating resources. It's more efficient in like driving the national, the, uh, driving the direction for the, for the nation, uh, because they think the Western style of public debate, um, the due diligence process, is a waste of time because you you guys just go back and forth and can make decisions and look at us we make decisions you know quick but it's you can make a decision quick you, you know but it's costly your logistics cannot catch up so people gave the reason why one of the reasons people went hungry on campus uh, in Jenjo at the Foxconn facility was that when they ordered everyone to eat their food in their dorms not in the canteens to to stop like um to 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 stop all the large gatherings it's logistically impossible because for people think about you you know you have to 
the, the dormitories are 45 minutes away from um, on foot from from where they work, and they don't have all the shuttles to. So if you tell people, okay, you have to go back to your dorm during the day to eat your lunch and then come back to work, you have to provide the logistics for people to go home, eat, and then come back. It's just not feasible. And then if people have to walk, if you don't provide transportation, people have to walk 45 minutes one way, eat, and then come back. I mean, the entire production schedule is disrupted. So it's not like... So CCP has this mentality, they order people to do whatever they want without thinking the detail, without going through the logistics. And that's a typical CCP mentality. I see that all the time. And then so what happens is a lot of people don't get food, they can't eat, they go hungry. And then their boss may ha might have kept them on, on, the on the production line to keep working. And that's where the human casualties happen. So I think this is a perfect example to show the CCP leaders or anyone who's still believing the, the communist style or the centralization work, a centralized government work, you should think twice. This is the perfect case study to tell you it does not work because you pay with a human sacrifice. You pay with a human price. I think this is a perfect follow-up from yesterday's discussion. Uh, between the debate, um, between, you know, the, the centralized system versus a decentralized democratic system. All right, let's see. I think I have a few super chat questions. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, let's see. Let's see. From Griffin, this is incredibly important information for people in the U.S. to see and hear, and we are not getting any of this from our mainstream media who worship almighty Apple. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. I, I think this is very important because when I was reading the news to see how they covered it, I got so disappointed because it's so detached from the reality that I see. And I'm only giving you kind of the highly condensed summarized version. There's just so much detail that I couldn't fit into this. Um, but thank you. How uh, from William Warren, has this affected Apple stock price yet? I don't know. Um, I saw a report from Reuters saying that 30, they expect 30% of Apple's production will be affected. So they estimate, Reuters est estimated 30%. So I have a feeling that Apple price, Apple's iPhones, the prices probably have to go up or it's or the stock will have to go down because if think if people are paid quadruple, right? Not only they lost all these people, but they have to pay people four times more to get them back. Think about the cost. So the zero COVID is really, I think, contributing to the worldwide inflation because it's highly inefficient. The inefficiency, the inefficiency of CCP's zero COVID is costing the worldwide inflation in my mind. Okay, and, and this is the perfect example. All right, so let me see. From Tilt Saul, Russian and Chinese politics appear very similar. Very similar. What are the main differences between Russia and China in terms of politics? Um, hold on, let me take a sip of water. Well, they're both authoritarian they're both run by a strong man, a dictator. Um, <clears throat> but the difference is China is communist and Russia is not. And that still is a big difference. Um, so that's just my quick answer to your big question um, without oversimplifying it. From Rob Hawk. Where will the zero COVID policy, policy take China? Um, I, I don't think it will go away because it's politically correct. It's politically, politically incorrect for Xi Jinping to say it was wrong. Um, it will stay for a while. And depending on how, how the pandemic situation is in China, uh, we will see, I think we will see zero COVID in China for a long time. I, I did a video on that uh, last week. Was it last week? It felt, it felt like so, 
<laughs> so long ago, but I think I, I did a video on that. All right, here with Travel with Love. Thank you for sharing your beautiful insights. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the great encouragement. All right, so any other questions? Um, from George K, is a Taiwan invasion possible while maintaining zero COVID? Could a large army be mobilized um, for that without risking transmission of the virus within the army and the general population? Hmm. I think zero COVID is now being used as a, as a political tool, right? It is, um, I, I think, I don't think CCP is concerned with, because zero COVID, a government would be concerned with the safety of its uh, soldier or with the effectiveness, effectiveness of its army when there's an outbreak. But I think in CCP's case, um, it may have it may have to impose some draconian measures on the soldiers in the event that it's interest it's planning for war. But you know, because it's the diff one one characteristic about communism is it has no respect for human life. Uh, meeting its goal meeting its political goals is always more important than human life. So it would not consider the safety or the well-being of its soldiers. It's only thinking about how can, how can the regime meet its goal, accomplish its uh, mission. So it will look at zero COVID. Um, it will look at the relationship between zero COVID and its military mission from that perspective. Okay, so let me see. A question from William Warren. Has the central CCP done anything about this? Um, the, latest, the latest report coming out of Chinese state media is uh, everything's under control. Uh, Foxconn is, is, is resuming, is, back, is on track to be, to be uh, normal. Uh, to to resume normal production, and the local government I think is sending uh, either 400 or 200 additional medical staff to to do testing on site. Uh, I think the government, local government, is sending hundreds of people as um, extra help to help the, the 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 company because it is important. If Foxconn and then all the Chinese people are saying we cannot afford to lose. Foxconn, if we lose uh, them to, to Vietnam or India, you know, Henan, the province will be totally screwed. They're already in big trouble financially. So if they lose the biggest employer in the province, it's just, you know, it's, 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 it's gone. So will Foxconn, will Apple make Foxconn to take, uh, to move their production somewhere else to Vietnam or India? Well, we should see. But China, I think, would do everything it can to keep Foxconn there. That, that's what the Chinese media are talking about right now. All right, I have a... Uh, all right. Uh, a woman died in the same dorm during the Foxconn lockdown. Do you know what happened? I don't know. I think there are, I know there are other death cases. Um, some are quite gruesome to say. And I, I don't want to mention here because then I could get a, <laughs> YouTube can censor my video. But there are just a lot of gruesome details coming out about people either dropping dead or whatever happens. But there are yeah, more death cases that happen on campus there. But Chinese government and um, the the companies is denying them. All right. Um, the underlying okay. All right. So, I think if we don't have any other questions, I will end it here. I will do lives more often, give you timely updates. Uh, 
and then I will ha give I'll have more time for Q and A's on Thursdays. Uh, okay, one more questions from Sumulant. Maybe you answered this before, but she has a projection for a bipolar world in the near future. What do you know about that? Well, Xi Jinping isn't shy about telling the world that you know he wants to he wants to build a what do you call that a, a common a common community a common community a community of common destiny right that's the, his words a community of common destiny so you want to build this world village where we all we share the same destiny <laughs> with the ccp i think that's a scary thought <laughs> i think uh and then he truly believed communism is meant for the world it is a better system um i think i think He's having a hard time convincing us. I think other uh, politicians who are more on the progressive side uh, should learn from these cases. They should really learn from from these from these cases to understand why, you know, a centralized government, a government with all you know centralized power, is going to fail. It's going to fail miserably. Um, you can, you are turning people against you. I, I hope people who who are um, who really believe socialism works for the world should really wake up and see this. All right, I've talked a lot, and I really thank everyone for your for your time uh, for sp spending about an hour with me, and also thank all the donors for donating. And uh, I'll be back. I'll see you later. Okay. Please like my videos. People say I don't say this often enough, but please like and share my videos. Thank you. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.